Welcome back to Media Week. Well, let's take a look now at the ratings for week 30 for free to air TV. As you can see there, seven new Sunday, the X Factor, nine new Saturday and Sunday, and the X Factor results topping that particular survey. And moving on to the next page, nine news ahead of seven news there with the force Australia's Got Talent and Sunday Night bringing up the rear. And now on to subscription TV ratings for week 30. And we'll start again with the most watched sports programs. It's AFL Richmond versus Carlton. AFL taking out the top three spots there. Finals footy on Fox as well. If we go over the page uh, to non-sports programs now, Australia's next top model on Fox 8. Location, location, family guy. The Simpsons still going strong. Uh, modern family as well. And for more on those programs and what's happening in the world of television, let's return now to James Manning, our co-host from Media Week. And James, some news this week around um, Peter Meekin, 7 and 10, doing a deal, which will see him work at one of those stations. Yeah, they announced in August that uh, 10 announced that, look, they'd done a deal to take uh, Peter Meekin away from mm. 7. 7 said, no, hang on a minute, he's got a no-compete clause, he's going to have to wait 12 months. Ten were hoping it might be six months or less. They've been in furious negotiations. They've done a deal which will see him uh, have to wait out a six-month period, which will take him through to sort of mid-February. Then he'll go across. Ten also uh, revealed that look, he'll be looking after all news and current affairs, which will include the new Adam Bowl and uh, morning shows, right. Wake Up and Studio Ten, whenever they get to me. So Ten are really making an investment in their news division. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, yeah. And they're, they're putting him on. They think there's a good few years left in uh, Peter Meek. And look, he's... Uh, 70, I think he is now, but look, he's, right. he's still uh, up and ready for a new challenge and he'll certainly have one ahead of him at 10 on it. And what do you think about the, the prospects of that with people like Boland, who's got that uh, pedigree, if you like, from Sunrise and Peter Meekin with that experience? Is that a winning combination for them? Uh, it should be, but it's an interesting challenge for uh, Meekin because 10 is a certain a fair way back off the pack. You know, mm -hmm. 7 and 9 have always been up there and he went from one to the other and sort of in that combat. But 10 are a bit different, so they're going to be betting in some new shows that will be a fair way behind the, the competition. And Meekin's possibly not used to sort of putting up with low ratings and trying to build a brand, whereas he's, he's had good brands to work with in the future. So it's a different challenge for in him, if you like, year. rather than... Uh, Absolutely, yeah. yeah, yeah okay. interesting to see how he tackles that. Now, still on 10, Hamish McDonald, he's quit after holding a number of different roles. Do we know why and do we know where he's going? Well, it, it looks like he was sort of a bit unhappy. He had a show called The uh, The Truth Is recently, which they trialled for a few weeks. Didn't do particularly well, and I think he would have liked it a little bit longer to make it work. Um, I, I think they decided not to. There's a bit of speculation. Look, he's not really suited to that to the 10 environment, perhaps. Mm -hmm. He's maybe more an SBS reporter or, you know, with an international broadcaster. Uh, he worked with Al Jazeera for quite a while, and I think that's where we might see him in the future in more of that sort of a role. So he's got that foreign correspondent kind of feel to him. Yeah, rather he than loves a... look, you know, world's hot spots. You know, he's mm -hmm. there reporting on them, which he did some great work at Ten, and he started off on that George Negus show, of course, uh, reporting yeah. from places like Egypt during the sort of uh, the turmoil there. And he did some good work, but they maybe don't have the right vehicles for him, perhaps. Interesting time. challenge for Ten because they started with George Negus, that the older star presenter. They've gone with a younger Hamish McDonald. He's now left. So mm. interesting to see where they go. Now, Seven's new Million Dollar Minute, that launched this week. I've had a watch of that show. Very start of the century, if you like, in, in oh, some cases. Very much. That's up against uh, Hot Seat on 9 and Eyewitness News on 10. How did it race? It looks started fantastically up here. It outrated Hot Seat clearly on day one. The show's pulled back together by day two. After three days this week, uh, Hot Seat had snuck back in front. So people sampled the new one, but they've sort of trended to go back to... Uh, at a, well, the, the hot seat audience never went away. It seemed that uh, Million Dollar Minute brought in a lot of new viewers to right. the slot, but they've sort of backed off a little bit. So it's too early to get a good read on how to go long term. But at, at least uh, Seven will be hoping at least they're up there competing on a level playing field with hot seat and they can maybe build and, and sneak ahead again. OK, let's talk footy now because we're coming up to grand final week and we've had the Football Media Association Awards. Who were the winners? Yeah, um, the Age did very well. Uh, Caroline Wilson, Greg Baum both won awards down there and Fox Footy, the uh, Astro Channel of the Year, picked up uh, four awards as well. Uh, Jared Healy and uh, Anthony Hudson both uh, got gongs. Uh, Buddy 13, a special they did during the year on Buddy Franklin and the sort of nightly AFL show, AFL 360, did OK. And... Uh, SEN uh, 1116, the sort of sports broadcasting uh, 
AM radio station in Melbourne also did pretty well too. Okay, so a number of winners in that category now. The new News Corp Australia CEO, Julian Clark, he's been in New York. We talked about uh, Rupert Murdoch a little while, but he's been giving him an update on, on the business here. What's he telling you? Yeah, well, gee, I don't know. I won't privy to that, but he was in the Big Apple this week uh, giving an update. I guess he'd, he'd want to know about, look, how, how are the newspapers going? What's the latest on the revenue? What's the latest on the digital uptake? Um, all big challenges ahead of the company. Um, we, you know, the Australians got something like 55,000 uh, digital subscribers now, so that's, you know, it's not a bad uptake, but they want to keep that going. And we've seen the paywalls recently introduced to papers like the Herald Sun and the Daily Telegraph, so he'll be really wanting a, a, a good fix on how that's going. And what's the response from advertisers? Can we get the, all those eyeballs? Can we get advertisers sort of working those crowds? What do you make of all this speculation that the Australian is, is quite unprofitable? And uh, the only reason it's there is because uh, the Murdoch family quite likes that particular paper. Well, I'm sure they like it. And the, the, the readers who are liking it, uh, who are buying it, like it too, but there's just not enough of them. So they, they're, they're really pinning their hopes on digital, I guess, and getting those digital subscribers, you know, getting more of them in to test the product, which we talked about the paywall. Yeah. And hopefully that'll happen. The 55 is a good figure, but they'd probably they'd love to get that up it's towards 100,000 a bit more. So we'll keep our eye on that metered model and see if that can attract yeah. more sure buyers. Yeah. Okay, James, thanks for your time Thank today. You. And that's where we'll have to leave Media Week for this week. From all the team here, thanks for your company. Yeah.